Now, you have to, in order to see this and so forth, do you have a uh, phone that you can scan this? Somebody has to sign it. You have to sign okay. something. You know, somebody ends up having something. Where are you all from? We uh, actually moved here from Des Moines, Iowa, oh. a few months ago. So we're just trying to uh, learn about our surroundings, I guess. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, yeah, thank you. Previously, in one of the videos, we explored the Curtis Hickson Park, which is right across the Hillsborough River. While over there, we had seen this strange looking building with silver spires through the trees. We did some research and found out it was the Henry B. Plant Museum, so we thought we'd take a tour. The Henry B. Plant Museum is housed in the south wing of the 1891 Tampa Bay Hotel. This Victorian Railroad Resort is an excellent example of the opulent style of this period. It is now a National Historic Landmark. It contains the actual furnishings enjoyed by the first guests to visit the hotel. The museum accurately reflects the luxurious furnishings of the turn of the century America. It also reflects the vision of American transportation pioneer Henry B. Plant. Hotel features original opulent furnishings and artifacts from the hotel collected by Mr. and Mrs. Plant on several buying trips to Europe and the Orient. 1898 of newspapers. Inside, you'll see a hotel guest register. Plants Tampa Bay Hotel is the most luxurious. Bonfires to illuminate the hotel so that the minarets would also shine at night. During the 1880s, Henry Bradley Plant was building an empire of railroads, steamships, and hotels. He wanted that empire to have a palace, and that palace was the Tampa Bay Hotel. Henry Bradley Plant was born October 27, 1819, and died on June 23, 1899. He was a businessman, entrepreneur, investor involved with many transportation interests and projects, mostly railroads and in the southeastern United States. In fact, it was the first time the hotel had been fully occupied. 128 press passes were issued for writings from all over the world. It was Stephen Crane, Richard Harding Davis, and Frederick Remington. Clara Barton arrived to organize the Red Cross. And on the grand as the Army General summoned to their rocking chair, waiting for the word to leave the union. Teddy Roosevelt and his rough riders from Canyon Field had not even visited White the hotel. What do you think of Tampa being in the last one with 20,000 mules and horses overnight and then uh, about 30,000 soldiers? It was incredible, but the populace of Tampa was divided. At night, the hotel was a wall-to-wall -wall celebration with soldiers in the bar, the dining room, and outside on the grounds. But in the daytime, the heat climbed to a devastating 110 degrees. The dust and tackle was skyping. A logistical mess developed in the rail yards with plant single rail line backed up from miles. Perishable rocket. Soldiers turned to the residents of the city. They had very little to eat, and they would come in and throw baby for food. And the things ate in our family, we would just get up and let them come and sit down and eat. For a month of the five month war, the hotel prospered and plants grew live. But a year later, Henry Plant died of a heart attack. His heirs had no interest in what was now called Plant's Folly. It seems the tourists weren't flocking to the Tampa Bay Hotel. It sold to the city of Tampa in 1905 for $125,000. Hello, how are you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah.
evidence keeps him from telling his parents or from seeking medical help. When his family discovers he is ill, his father, recuperating from an illness, sends his mother to be with him. After searching the hospital and camp, I finally found him in a deplorable condition. I bathed him, staying right by his side, but for too many days, his illness has been misdiagnosed as malaria. I call his father immediately, but there is little we can do, even though his father is a doctor. Henry's parents are with him as he bravely fights. A good soldier he is, but he loses the battle to typhoid fever. Henry Dobson dies on September 11, 1898. He went south in 1853 and established express lines on various southern railways, and in 1861 organized the Southern Express Company and became its president. In 1879, he purchased with others the Atlantic and Gulf Railroad of Georgia, and later reorganized the Savannah, Florida, and Western Railroad, of which he became president. He purchased and rebuilt in 1880 the Savannah and Charleston Railroad, now Charleston and Savannah. Not long after this, he organized the Plant Investment Company to control these railroads and advance their interests generally, and later established a steamboat line on the St. Johns River in Florida. From 1853 until 1860, he was general superintendent of the Southern Division of the Adams Express Company, and in 1867 became president of the Texas Express Company. In the 1880s, most of his accumulated railroad and steamship lines were combined into the plant system, which later became part of the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad. Those guys were very tall in those days, though. No, they weren't. 